Anytime that I go away, I like to carry with me a little set of art supplies that is inspired by the trip that I'm going on in order to be able to create art. And recently, my sisters were kind enough to surprise me with a trip to Budapest, like a girl's trip. And in this video, I'm going to share all the art supplies that I took with me for this very special trip. You by no means need to carry loads and loads of art supplies when painting outdoors or when painting abroad. But I <laughs> I am definitely an overpacker and I thought that it would be fun to just highlight some of the art supplies that I took with me along with why I took them. I didn't use everything, but for me, the type of person that I am, I would rather... Um, have it and not need it then need it and not have it <laughs> um, and that will be very evident throughout this video I will link all the art supplies that I use down below in the description but in addition to that if you also want to see art supplies that I've taken on other trips if you want to know my tips and tricks on carrying art supplies and traveling with them or if you just want to see the art that I've created in Budapest in Malta in Italy and all the other places that I've been to then be sure to check out the videos that I will link up above and down below for you as well so to start off with I will talk about paper and for me it starts off with this sketchbook so this is a moleskin a5 watercolor sketchbook or sometimes called a watercolor journal or watercolor album and part of the reason that I took it with me is just because it's a sketchbook that's been with me in Malta it's been with me when I went to Venice when I went to the Amalfi coast and I kind of thought that it would be nice to continue to carry it with me when I go abroad as kind of like a collection collection of holiday memories and Budapest was no exception. I like it because it can take wet media very well as you can see it has just a small amount like it has some tooth but not too much and it can also take dry media. The only reason that it's not my end all and be all is that sometimes the way that it reacts with watercolour isn't 100% great. So that is why I also carry other sketchbooks, which I will show you. In addition to that, um, if you can see, as you can see here, this is kind of like all the art supplies that I took with me when I went to Venice. And it's funny to see because the art supplies, some of them are the same, but quite a lot of them have changed. And I will highlight that throughout this video. So as well as that sketchbook, I also carried this tiny one. Now, this is a sketchbook that was kindly sent to me by Heine Müller. And I'd wanted to try their sketchbooks for ages because I really like the texture of their paper it's not too much not too little and it's not like that mechanical completely uniform um kind of texture that I tend to dislike and not only that because of the size a5 tends to be my go-to size but in Malta I found that it was actually really helpful having a bit of a smaller size just for those times where you don't really have time or space to carry something bigger so I carried this as a just in case both of these sketchbooks have cellulose paper and given my recent love for 100% cotton watercolour paper I also decided to carry this with me so this is a block of 100% cotton Bao Hong watercolour paper it has 20 sheets you can see slightly bigger than the A6 but slightly smaller <laughs> than the A5 sketchbooks and it's quite different for me I hadn't taken a block with me before but I enjoyed it I enjoyed having like a completely flat surface I enjoyed having the 100% cotton watercolor paper and it actually made my experience of using it very nice so a new addition but definitely one that I enjoyed obviously with everything there are pros and cons my favorite paper was this but I also like working in sketchbooks because I like the freedom of going from page to page to page whereas if you're working in a block you're kind of committed to that one page because it's glued on all four sides but these are the bits of paper that I took with me really and truly I could have probably just taken one and if I had to take one it matter it would have probably been this but this one because it's my go-to and has other art inside it and it's a good low pressure all round kind of sketchbook the Bao Hong pad because I just really enjoy working on that paper to create watercolour pieces and then the smaller Hein Müller sketchbook because again I really like the paper it's low pressure and it's just a smaller size for the times where I feel like I, I don't have enough space to carry the bigger sketchbooks. Next I want to touch on palettes now I've created an entire video highlighting the majority of the travel palettes that I have and spoiler alert there are quite a few um so that means that there's quite a few to choose from so you can imagine it was quite a struggle for me to narrow it down and the top three contenders for me for this trip were these palettes and I ended up taking two of them so just to highlight some of them 
This is the Roman Schmoor Urban Sketching Palette and I love Roman Schmoor watercolours so it's kind of no surprise that I wanted to take this palette with me. I've created a whole separate video highlighting the colours that actually come in this set and I've kind of added a few and removed one. So the, color, so the main modifications that I made were... I removed the sap green light from this set and instead added the hookers green which is my go-to green from Roman Schmoor. In addition to that I also added the quinacrid and gold hue because I really 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 love that colour and I also added the mineral violet. Now I knew it wouldn't be necessarily a colour that I would use that much but I just really really love it <laughs> and as I said I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. In addition to that I also added the cobalt teal by Daniel Smith and this was kind of like a just in case kind of color and I added um, a half pan of the Etcher Golden watercolors and that's just I have been really enjoying adding hints of gold to my art and it's something that I wanted to continue to do even while in Budapest so that's how I customized this cute little palette in addition to the other wonderful Roman Schmoor colors and I really 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 enjoyed using this palette I am so glad that Roman Schmoor are now doing half pans which means that I could carry more colors than I would have been able to carry otherwise in such a tiny cute little palette especially as this has kind of become my comfort paint paint that I reach for instinctively. I've made an entire separate video highlighting the pros, the cons, why I love it and, and swatching it out and using it. So if you want to see that then I'll link the video for you. Now this palette again I've kind of made a video about it and I ended up not taking it with me um, so I'll talk about it briefly and the reason that I didn't take it with me is because I decided to carry the portable painter with me instead and fill it with my Daniel Smith colors prior to my Roman Schmoor palette and prior to my portable painter palette this palette was very much my go-to when it came to urban sketching and it still holds a very dear place in my heart and in fact the majority of the colors that are in this palette are actually in my portable painter palette so it's not gone completely um it's just kind of been upgraded a little bit so I've made a video kind of talking about the portable painter and reviewing it. And for my Kofi members, I made a separate video highlighting all the colors that I added to this palette, as well as the rationale behind it. I mentioned I thought that it would be perfect and fitting to add my Daniel Smith watercolors to this palette. <laughs> and as you can see it's very well loved and the reason that I wanted to take this palette with me to Budapest is that it's quite versatile it's very cleverly made I added some of my favorite colors to it and so I kind of felt that the setup of the palette itself would be perfect for urban sketching and then I added my favorite tube paints and together <laughs> created an absolutely amazing palette that I really enjoyed using while in Budapest. One of the things that I love to do when kind of traveling is thinking about the colors that I think I'm going to see on that trip and using that to decide what kind of paints I'm going to carry with me. Now this palette itself was created as a all-round urban sketching palette but then the freedom that I get with carrying another palette such as the Roman Schmoor one is that I'm then able to add any extra colors that I think I'm definitely going to use or that I'm feeling more attracted to during that period of time. <laughs> Sticking on the theme of paints I always seem to love bringing gouache <laughs> And that's because I really do love painting landscapes and and places in gouache. So I brought with me my Stay Wet gouache palette, which I absolutely love to use. <laughs> but I just need to get better about... I just find that for a quick and easy, fast painting, watercolour is my go-to. Like, watercolour is just so easy to use the water will stay cleaner for longer and thus that means that a lot of the time I end up reserving my gouache for when I'm in the hotel or when I have a lot of time and it just so happened that on this trip I didn't have masses of time because I just really had a good time with my sisters and hanging out with them so although I carried this with me I didn't end up using it and I'm not going to lie this will feature pretty much in every <laughs> every holiday video because every time that I go on holiday the thing that I think I am going to want to do most is paint with gouache and sometimes I do sometimes I don't but it is a staple in my travel art case. 
And perhaps unsurprisingly, I also took with me the Art Traveler, this bad boy, and made a video highlighting how I use it, why I love it. And it's just a great way to be able to carry a flat surface with you to paint or draw on. The case itself can like be stuck backwards like this because of the Velcro, but it also has pockets here that you can use to store your art supplies. Speaking of case, <laughs> I use this super awesome affordable case from that I got from Amazon to store all my art supplies and carry them with me safely. In a way, it almost feels like a way to, to you know, control myself in terms of like contain my art supplies in here. So if they fit in here, they can come. <laughs> but sometimes I break my own rules. So I like it because it has multiple partitions. It's very flexible. It's nice and big. It's versatile. It has a place to hold my pencils, a place to hold kind of loose items. This thing itself, like this insert, there's two extra ones that come that have Velcro that you can attach in here if you want. But I removed them because what I wanted was this extra big kind of deep area to add all my loose art supplies in there as well. I'll link it down below for you, but just to highlight some some of the other supplies that I took with me. Unsurprisingly, brushes. <laughs> Perhaps a bit overkill. I took five <laughs> brushes with me. Um, these two brushes are my kind of staples, my go-tos. I really love them. They are affordable. I bought them two years ago from Amazon. They are still going strong. They wiggle a little bit now, um, so I need to get some pliers to make them firm, but I have no complaints about them other than that. This is a size 12, which is slightly smaller than normal size 12s. This is a size 8 that's slightly smaller than normal size 8s. It's more like a size 6, but they are like good staple round brushes. I tend to use them primarily for watercolour, but I can also use them with gouache without issue. Now, in addition to that, I wanted to take some of my new travel brushes with me just to experiment with them and see what I think, um, get a bit of a better idea. So this one is a Rosemary & Co cat's tongue brush and I got it because it's a different shape and so far so good. Again, no complaints about them. Um, I do find that I tend to reach out for my round brushes more so when urban sketching, but I brought it with me in case I wanted to do florals or create something else while on a holiday. And then these two brushes I bought from AliExpress in my last haul. I honestly took them just so that I could experiment with them and just get a bit of a better idea of how they function, how they work. But I think that these three are like my go-to and these two, they are okay. They're not the best brushes I've had. Bristles, the, some of the bristles kept coming off, which was very annoying. I'm still trying to figure them out if that makes sense. And once I have like a firm opinion of them, I will let you know. My other brush that I didn't take with me this time but I do normally is this one <laughs> so this is a filbert brush by pro art so it's a pro art filbert brush and the reason I didn't bring it is just because I kind of felt like six brushes would be a bit overkill and I wanted to try and use the cat's tongue brush by rosemary and co and I found that the shapes were quite similar so beforehand these three were my go-to and now I've added this as well and I'm undecided about these two <laughs> to be determined. The other brush that I took with me is this one and it's just because it's smaller than all my other brushes and I wanted to have it just in case I wanted to do any extra fine details. Just a quick shout out to this case. So this I bought for 50 pence. It's normally like in the student section, really super inexpensive um, pencil case. And the reason that I carry this is that I don't always want to carry my massive big, you know, case that has all my art supplies when I am going out and about urban sketching. When I'm going out or when I need a smaller setup, put a few brushes, whatever medium I think I'm going to use, I put it in here and I go. And that's why I always tend to carry it with me inside my bigger case now let's touch on <laughs> pencils so of late i've really enjoyed combining coloring pencils with my watercolor work and i thought that would be something i would also want to continue while in budapest so i carried these colors with me is there any particular rhyme or reason no <laughs> they are just the colors that i am most drawn to so i brought 
the colors with the gold band that you're seeing at the bottom are Faber Castell Polychromos colors and the colors that don't have it are the Artex colors. I essentially just brought a very good and mixed range of colors that I would want to use. The main aim of this being that I wanted versatility. Artex were kind enough to gift me their set of 126 coloring pencils and I've really been enjoying using them. I'm far from an expert when it comes to coloring pencils but given that there are so many <laughs> given that there are so many pencils in that set I kind of felt a bit freer to experiment and to play around and to push around which is why I brought both of them kind of the pencils that are a bit on a pricier end as well as the pencils that are on the cheaper end so that I can experiment with both of them. The other pencils that I brought were the Helix erasable pencils just so that I can do sketches in something other than graphite <laughs> and I review them in one of my art holes which I will link for you. A sharpener and a rubber. <laughs> in addition to that I also carried my favorite mechanical pencil <laughs> this is the Graph Gear 1000 it is the 0 0.51 by Pentel and I've just really love this pencil. I can't put it down. <laughs> Honestly can't put it down and it's funny because before I was using the cheapest of cheap 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 mechanical pencils that I could find and I thought that there wouldn't be much of a difference and since I've started using this pencil every time that I want to sketch I immediately spend however long looking for it and reaching for it so it is a staple when it comes to my urban sketching art on holiday kit okay when it comes to pens <laughs> i brought a, a number of different categories one is just like your standard biro pen and this pen i like because it has a super thin line it's like the matador pinpoint pen then I also brought the Pentel signed pen, nice strong black lines, can't fault them. And if you want to know more about them, then definitely be sure to check out my Pentel Urban Sketching Essentials video. Then, unsurprisingly, fine liners. I tend to like having three nib sizes, so one that's super fine, one that's kind of fine, one that's medium and one that's large. So what I mean by that is perhaps one that's a 0 0.1 in 0.3, one that's 0 0.5 and one that's 0 0.8 and the bigger the number the thicker the nib. Then we have some more fine liners but these fine liners are special fine liners if you like because they are coloured. And I also love carrying a Posca pen or a white gel pen, something that I am able to add white details with. And last but not least, still kind of a pen, <laughs> is a water brush pen. And these are just so helpful, super versatile. You add water to the body in here and then by pressing it, you're able to get the brush wet and create paintings. It's a super helpful solution for when you don't have time to carry jars of water and you want to do a really quick painting. Now just to highlight some miscellaneous items. This is a clip that has a magnet on it and I absolutely love using them in my urban sketching setup. It's a good way to keep my palette steady if I'm using a metal one. Not only do they hold my pages open but they are so helpful when it comes to holding any mag any metal palette that I have in place. Um, then I brought this, a big of a rogue one, not to paint with, but just to kind of separate my pages from my block when urban sketching. And then this is just a super helpful way to carry water on the go with you. You can have clean water, dirty water, you can use them both interchangeably. But the reason that I love it is because it has a clip at the bottom, which just clips onto either my sketching board or to my sketchbook and just makes urban sketching or painting outdoors so much easier. They do also kind of screw on, so if you get a good set, the water won't fall out. So some tape for nice crisp edges and then also carrying a bit of tissue or a rough rag, just something that I can wipe off the excess water with. Another <laughs> miscellaneous one is this. So if you've seen my how to travel with art supplies video, then you will have seen this palette, which I've added some palette paper to. And it's just a way for me to have extra mixing space, which comes in super handy when using my gouache. Because the tin is metal as well, it is magnet friendly and it just goes with my setup very nicely. 
If you are still watching, then you are most definitely a real MVP and I really, really, really appreciate you. Let me know that you're still watching by telling me when it comes to traveling with art supplies, do you pack heavy or light? If you enjoy this video, then you are definitely going to love these next ones. In one, I talk through tips to ensure that your paints don't get thrown away and that you travel safely when it comes to your art supplies. And in the others, I share the trips that I have taken across the globe while creating art thank you so much for watching and i will see you next week bye this um there's extra kind of extension bits that you can this kind of um that can hold pencils a few Ooh.